Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Matt Wilson, and today we are here with Jeff Jenkins. I am so excited to talk to Jeff today. He is an award-winning content creator and travel journal journalist. He is the founder of Chubby Diaries and his co-founder of the Black Travel Alliance. Uh, he has been on the Points Guy advisory panel. He's been featured in all sorts of places like Forbes, New York Times, Washington Post. I think this is where I actually uh, heard about Jeff. And yeah, I'm just excited to, to talk to him today, especially because he's doing something really important out there. Um, and he is getting together a community that encourages and motivates plus size people to travel the world. And I just think that's incredibly important. And uh, when someone posted Jeff's work, I was like, I want to be friends with this guy, so I should have him on the podcast. And the best part is he's in Austin, Texas. So hopefully when I get back there, we'll uh, be able to get to hang out. So without further ado, Jeff, welcome. Matt, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad to, to be with your listeners today. No, you're, you're very welcome. Um, Man, I would just love to hear a little bit more about your, your story and uh, where you come from. We were talking a little bit offline that you're originally from uh, Orlando and you've been in Austin for nine years. You've traveled all over the world at this point. You were telling me a little bit about your, your college experience where you, you just kept going off and uh, to these far off places, it sounded like, and taking full advantage, which I, I totally admire. So yeah, we'd just love to hear a little bit more about how you got started traveling. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, born and raised in Orlando, Mickey Mouse country. My dad actually just retired as a chef at Disney. So I was, as a kid, I was going to Disney literally all the time and then the older we kept getting the more and more we could just go on our own and like I, I love that I feel like Disney World definitely shaped the wonder or or scratched that itch of being adventurous and seeing the world in a different way and seeing it um visionary like I love Disney and how like how they what's the word for it like I think about the imagineering and how they just had to create things and like magical worlds and stuff like that and you're like oh my god this is incredible so it just it pushed the you beyond belief on like what's normal and like took it to the next level of like uh, somebody's brain and, and ideas came to life at these different places and so that that definitely sparked a lot of creativity within me as well um, but I was a school teacher uh, I, I taught for nine years as a high school choir teacher um, um, here in Florida, in Florida, and then also here in Austin, Texas. And I, I remember like quitting uh, or retiring from teaching. And I was like, what do I want to do? What is it that I'm really going to like, like, what do I want to pursue? And uh, it really came to me that I was like, you know what, I think I want to go down this entrepreneurship route, not knowing what I wanted to do. I tried a couple of little ventures, but while I was doing the ventures and they were actually doing well, I realized, I was like, man, this isn't beneficial. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm making an impact. Like, I don't feel like, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's very like, like clockwork kind of stuff. Like you do this, you get this result. And I was like, I don't feel like that's impactful to the world. And only a certain amount of people actually, like it, it didn't, like I, could, I wouldn't brag about it on, on, on social media or something like that. And so, I went on a mission trip, and when I went on this mission trip uh, to Rwanda, I went to go build gardens. Um, and while building these gardens in Rwanda, um, we, me and my friends realized that the people needed water uh, in this city that we were in. And so that's when we came back and was like, hey, let's start a water well project and build water wells. And mind you, I know nothing about water. I didn't know how it came out of the ground. Um, I didn't know how to dig a well. None of us were engineers. And we were able to figure it out. And we went back to Rwanda to go build our first well. And while I was there, I said, you know what? I want to travel the world, um, help people and get paid to do it. And that's what started me on this journey of like, like who, who travels the world and gets paid to do it? Where, what kind of job is that? And, and I landed on like the travel influencer, travel bloggers, those are the ones I saw that were like making money from travel blogging or from traveling. And so I was like, oh, I, I want to go down that route. And that's what started Chubby Diaries. 
Good for you. That that's amazing. And, and um, then Jeff, how did you come upon this niche? How did you decide? All right, Chubby Diaries. Uh, this is what I want to do specifically with because you know there's there's tons of travel bloggers, but you I'll really stand you. out. I mean, you know uh, that yeah, people are people are calling you. So this is this is good news. Yeah. So what happened was it was my cousin who. I remember everybody being like, oh, you should have a niche. You should have a niche. And I remember like, oh, I got to find a niche. What, what can I talk about? And I remember reading a book and the book was saying like, like big dreams, like dream big, like go for the gusto. And so in my heart, I always wanted to do something that other people weren't doing, um, just period. Like, and I was like, what, what, how, what is that? What impact can I make? And I know I just mentioned that earlier. And so my cousin who is a, PR rep, she helps companies do their branding and stuff like that. And so she gave me this questionnaire. I filled out the questionnaire and I was like, I got nothing out of this. And she was like, no, it's right there. She was like, what about you do like, like you're, you're fat and black, like talk about that. And I said, huh, you're right. And then I thought to myself, <laughs> like, I, I remember where I was at and I actually am almost getting emotional now thinking about it because I don't think I thought. Like, I remember exactly where I was at when I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, it just like all of like this flood of like, nobody's talking about this. I don't know any, uh, I don't know any uh, like that many blogs that are just like solely plus size travel. There's not a lot of information out there. And and I just, it just, I knew at that point that I was onto something. Uh, and you know how like people talk about, uh, you know, you have a good idea when people be like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. I, should, I, I wish I thought of that first. You know, uh, I, I got that from a lot of colleagues and peers and stuff like that. And so um, I knew I was on to something. I knew that this was something that I, one, had a lot of um, biases towards even myself. Like I realized I was like one of the only like like larger people traveling around the world as much as I was like, I go somewhere and I was like, man, I don't actually see like other plus size people traveling like me. And, and the images that we see on like most um, like websites or like in ads and magazines is always of like a fit person, uh, like traveling the world is, and it's like the most beautiful person in the world, quote unquote. Um, and so I feel like that's not fully a representation of America. Uh, or even the world, because uh, like we're uh, there's a lot of average body people out there, and 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 I wanted to be able to bring representation to that. So I knew I was onto something from that that me filling out. Like it didn't it didn't just come to me, and I was like, man, this is what I'm gonna do. But I fig filled it out, and I pondered on it myself uh, because of my cousin. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And uh, well, this this, this is. Uh, not only inspiring for for whomever is listening, of course, um, you know, what other, whatever race or shape or size or, or whatever, whoever out, out there is listening. Um, and I just want to highlight what you said about seeing other people like yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, as a owner of a, a travel company, we think about this a lot. And we're also careful not to misrepresent who comes on our trips. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we will have plus size people who come on our trips. Absolutely. You know, on, on almost every trip, like it's just, right. it just uh, yeah. is part of our demographic. And we want to make sure that we appropriately uh, showcase that in a way. And, you know, we don't force it, right? Like, Sometimes right. we have trips and there is no black representation. And, mm -hmm. you know, so we're not like trying to put photos up that aren't really real. But um, right. Jeff, I wanted to to talk to you a little bit more on, uh, of course, how we can get better about about this or, or better at this. And just as you said, um, make people feel, I think you said make people feel comfortable. And uh, or, or like I heard you say, one of your videos, you want to encourage and motivate plus size people to travel the world. So um, I, I first wanted to ask, I guess, what are some of the things that plus size people might want to think about um, when they are going to travel? Maybe 
they've never been outside of the country and uh, or, you know, they're they're going on a trip and they're like, oh, man, uh, there's a hike on this on this trip. It's a group thing. Maybe I don't feel so comfortable doing this whole hike. Um, yeah. What are some of the things that that go through your head personally before you, you set out on an adventure? Yeah, well, one thing I want to mention is that uh, I've come to these three things uh, when it comes down to plus size people's um, the lacks uh, within the travel space. Uh, there was a lack of accessibility, comfort, and community. And so I try to tackle all three of those things. Um, and talk about accessibility. Um, a lot of times people are caught up, and uh, especially there's a lot of biases towards uh, being plus size or being fat period and how there's like our fat phobia like people are fat phobic in a way some people are and I'm not saying that all is but um, one thing I always tell people and even with my uncle I'm not here to promote obesity at all I'm here to get people and encourage them to live life now I believe that people should have like the same experiences uh, there's all these other like weight loss um, like pages and blogs and companies and brand is is a multi-billion dollar business on weight loss by itself you know and a lot of times it's where we're trying to get you to it is never like talking to the person where they're at right now and I feel like with chubby diaries that's what we do we're talking to the person where they're at right now and that's powerful because there's so many there's, I mean, for the most part, there's not a lot of outlets that talk to the person where they're at right now. And so that's what we try to do. And so we do that through just the, the content that we create, um, even for myself, like a lot of research, uh, you actually have to look up stuff. I, I know that people who aren't plus size that don't look into things, they love to, uh, if they have the opportunity of letting somebody else plan their trip because of them not knowing they would do that. And um, everybody's not like me. I'm um, type A, I want to know everything I'm doing. I actually want to explore and learn. Like before I even got into this, I used to sit at my computer and I would make itineraries of like trips and like randomly plan like whole trips out, how much it costs and everything and never even go on a trip. And so I was just always that guy. Um, so I feel like that's like my little superpower. But I would say, I know a lot of people don't do that. And so um, do your research, like, Get online, find out what the size restrictions are, find out what the weight limits are. Um, those are things that help out uh, uh, most airport airlines, or you can even go to my website. I actually have a free guide on, um, on airline policies, like for people of size. And you can find out if you can get an extra seat on an airplane uh, at free of charge. And so like Southwest, Southwest is amazing with it. Uh, with their people of size, um, with their people of size policy, and uh, where you can get a free seat um, if if you purchase it ahead of time, they'll reimburse you. Or if you go up to the gate or you call ahead, you can find out if there's an empty seat next or on somewhere on the plane, and they'll try to put you in that seat. And if not, they'll put you on the next flight so that you can be uh, comfortable on the flight. So it's, it's things like that. And so I would, I would just say, do your research, talking about a hike with, with, with people uh, in groups. Like one thing you have to learn is that you also have to like know your body, um, know that like you, you might not be able to keep up with them and it's okay. Uh, but then it's also good to know like the people who are organizing the trip or putting the trip on that knowing that like meeting the needs of the people that's on that trip as well. And Knowing that, like, like I've I've been places where, and and I'm I'm a little bit more athletic than most plus size people. Like I really, I took my grandmother to to Paris, and uh, a few years ago, and she was just like, she was like, I don't know how you do it. She was like, I was like, what you mean? She was like, you're so big, but you just like move. You just don't stop moving. Like how? And so I was like, I don't know what it is. I think I just don't stop moving, and and that's what helps. But um, compared to other people, like, but I've had to learn for myself, like, it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to, like, not have to feel the pressure of having to keep up with the crowd sometimes. If it works, it works. And then you just know, like, um, there's all these trails out there now where they actually have, like, the intensity level 
on the trails or there's different excursions. And I've been trying to get that for more people to, to put that on their websites and things like that. Like how intense is the activity or excursion that you're doing? And so um, I'm trying to make that more universal in a lot of ways. That's great. I can't, I can't help but take some notes um, while, while you're speaking. And I, I like you, you cover those three things, accessibility, comfort, and community. And I just especially appreciate what you said about speaking to people where they are right now. Um, you know, if people ask me, uh, hey, I'm going on the Inca Trail, right? It's a three-day hike to Machu Picchu, or four-day hike, three-night to Machu Picchu. What should, you know, anything I should know before is it difficult? Of course, I'm going to tell them, yeah, it's difficult. And yeah, you should train, right? Like, you know, that's just <laughs> the more yeah. prepared you are, the better you'll have. But sign up for things and challenge yourself. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's just important um, that, as you said, people get out there and they don't let that hold them back because life is short. You know, it's like, yeah. it's what, what, what were some of your first, uh, your first trips where you said, all right, I'm going to go for it. Or did you always just have this confidence? Cause you know, well, I, I move well, so I'm just going to go out and, and do my thing. Yeah. Well, see, I, I feel like I didn't know. Yeah. I, w I was different. I would say that because even just as a, a as a black man, um, I didn't see a lot of black people out there traveling. There is power once again in representation. So now I, uh, I've learned for myself, I've seen different organizations now. There's like plus size hikers that mm. like they go and do hikes and they see, like now you get to see plus size people hiking. The only people I ever see hiking were skinny people. So and they be like, you automatically like dismiss things sometimes or it's not that they don't want to do it. It's the fact that they think they can't do it. And, and that's the issue. And um, and once again, imagery is so powerful. So I, I bet you didn't see other people that, that have similar shape as you, that might even, you might even be in your head thinking like, yeah, he might be uh, just as athletic as I am, or he can probably do that just as well. So I'm gonna get out there and do it too. And so, but we, if there's never been that representation, I think those are reasons to, for people not to do something. And um now I'm, I'm, you're, we're starting to see that like plus size people, once they've seen like people do these hikes, now they're over, now they're intrigued. Like, oh, okay, I can do this. All right, let me, let me listen in now. Like, okay. And now we're giving like the tips and the tricks that you need. The, the, the clothing, like now we have uh, outdoor brands actually making clothes for plus size people and making products for plus size people like backpacks that have extended waist so that when you have on your backpack see like most of the backpacks before and you try to put the waist clip on won't fit so it's very uncomfortable it's just not the right way and so now uh like granite gear i love them to death they made backpacks that now have a, a extended waist so that people that are plus size can do it and so i don't even know why people get upset about people making like like plus size items but I was like, cause it's like, you want them to get out there, right? And so this is a way for people to get uh, get active, to do more activities. They actually could lose weight from it. It just, all these different things. And so I, I continue to just go back off of uh, just that imagery thing of like them seeing themselves represented. And when they see themselves represented, now they're more intrigued. Now they're like, show me, show me what I can do. How can I get there? And so it takes brave people like myself, uh, and other people within the travel, uh, plus size travel community going out there and doing it themselves so that they can see themselves. I have a video of me going scuba diving or I did a post on Instagram. I've never gotten so many responses and DMs from people being like, you know what? I've never put this on my bucket list because I didn't think they, they had um, tanks and backpacks or wetsuits that were fit me. And so that to me was very powerful. Now people are like, you know what? Now it's on my bucket list. Now I'm okay. Like if Jeff can do it, I can probably get on there too. Or I can go scuba diving as well now. And that's the thing that I feel is like very powerful. Wow, that's great. And these are, these are things I just really never thought of um, 
uh, of course, personally, but these are things I'll see similar, uh, like the wetsuit thing. I never thought of that. Uh, I don't think we have a trip. We don't have a trip where it requires a wetsuit, right? Like uh, snorkeling in Belize, you don't really need a, a wetsuit just as, as an example. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic one that people who are you know, running these companies just may not have thought about. Um, and yeah. so this is, this is really great that you're getting people to, to continue to, to think about these things. I wanna let everybody know that I'm gonna link up um, any of the resources that Jeff talks about today uh, at under30experiences.com slash blog. So these will be all on the blog. Um, Jeff, could you repeat the name? Uh, of course, we're gonna shout out Southwest because that's amazing, the airline uh, who, who hooks you up. But also, uh, could you tell me who the brand was uh, that you mentioned that does the plus size backpacks? Uh, granite gear granite oh, gear okay okay yeah. cool I've, I've heard of them um yeah that's fantastic and for for uh maybe business owners that are listening to this as well i mean it, not only is it the right thing to do but it's also a serious addressable market that yeah come on you want to capture like it's just come good on. business and and that's the best that's the best when uh you're talking about sustainability for example with uh i don't know climate change and and a lot of these solutions are things that yes they improve they make the world a better place right but it's also you know there's also cost savings involved and you know or, or opportunities um because yeah i mean capitalism talks it it, it works um, and, and i feel like that has has propelled me in such a way because i knew i couldn't just go off of like emotions or like feelings or whatever like I want people to feel some kind of way or like I feel like this is fair like I, I started going to the bottom line of stuff and like like people understand money and I was like there's a whole marginalized group of people uh that have money to spend here in America that you can be making a buttload from because they will buy your products because there's nobody else that are that are that are creating uh products at this moment and so this is a great time to jump on uh, just the plus size travel because I know that the one thing I have seen we have seen it in the, tra uh, the fashion community where the fashion community has now embraced so even luxury brands now have like plus size um, like a catalog for plus size people or section for it and like Rihanna's uh, Shein or not Shein but um, Fenty like she has like when she came out it was automatically like hey we're going to make sure that we have sizes for all people. And now they're a billion, I mean, there's a billion dollar company now. Unbelievable. So, wow. Yeah. And, and are, are some of these brands and, and resources, are those in your guide? Uh, no, but I, they should be at it. Some of the, 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 the Fenty stuff is way more like, uh, is way more like uh, lingerie and underwears and stuff. Okay. Like that. So, yeah, <laughs> Show, shows what I know about fashion, but um, you know, those things about it, like uh, a plus size wetsuit, right? Like if you have mm -hmm. a, a link for that, um, please let me know. Uh, yeah, I, I just get on, you. Uh, I actually just got on uh, Amazon and found one great. Uh, for myself. I ended up buying my own. Uh, and, that, and that's the thing, like talking about the research. So I got online, I was going great white shark diving and uh or in the cage though and i know you had to wear a wetsuit we were in south africa and i was like hmm, let me get online let me see what their normal sizes are and they actually listed their sizes which was great and i think they stopped at like two x and i'm a four x in like a wetsuit and so i got online i was like you know what i'm not gonna chance it i'm gonna come with my own suit i i put uh i bought it while i was in new york uh, it came two days later um, and ended up having it for my trip. And so, yeah, I just did my own little research and found out from it. But I can, I don't know where that is. I, I bought it like years ago now and I just take it everywhere with me. No, that, that's great because I, I've actually seen now that you're talking about it, I'm going back through my, my years of travel experience and, and leading trips. But I, yeah, I've seen somebody um, actually... It's really sad. He went to go and, and dive between the tectonic plates in Iceland, but he couldn't get the he couldn't get the um, 
wetsuit. Yeah, the zipper yeah. up or, around his neck, and yeah, it was it was heartbreaking. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're uh, you're preparing people. Um, that mm. one one other tip, Jeff, that I thought was was really smart. Um, for the airlines was the seatbelt extender and that you can bring your own. So you don't have to, you know, feel uncomfortable asking the, the mm -hmm. flight attendants um, to help you out. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, you, you can, can just buy get those that on, on Amazon. Amazon, yeah, they're right there on Amazon. It depends, uh, I think there's two versions and I think Southwest uses a different one from everybody else. But for the most part, um, there you can see it online on Amazon which airlines they, they work with. And uh, but most of them, there's a universal one that is used for almost all the planes. Um, but yeah, but now I've gotten so good. Like, I, I mean, having the seatbelt extender or um, I've learned to, like they, they've gotten even more discreet because I've even met with a lot of, uh, a lot of different airlines and they're like, they're C-suite people and their diversity team. And they they have put it in their training now to make it very discreet on how they pass you the seatbelt extender and everything like that. Oh, that's really nice. Well, mm -hmm. hey, your efforts are are making a difference for a lot of people. So that's that's fantastic, Jeff. Um, are, are, are there any places in particular that are doing well with their inclusivity efforts? Um, like I saw you out with, uh, I think it was visitflorida.com. Uh, you were out doing something for them, but uh, are there any favorite places that, like you mentioned Southwest, but uh, geographic locations, destinations maybe that are doing a good job that other people could model after or, uh, you know, that our, our travelers could could go and check out? Yeah, I, I would say like, like South Africa definitely is one. Um, uh, they're just there's just larger people there, and so it just worked out great. Hawaii was awesome. Um, yeah, it's hard to because I've I've just learned how to make things happen. Uh, I feel like product wise, the outdoor space is doing a heck of a job. You know, like the outdoor industry is really really trying to find ways to make create products and make things a lot easier and accessible to you. Um, and even with uh, national parks, um, they do a really, really good job at showing you the levels of intensity of the heights, um, having ramps, um, and making it very, very comfortable uh, for a plus size person. So national parks definitely is one of my favorite things. Uh, like I love Glacier, I love uh, Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, like all of those places are just like amazing. And so I like going to those places as well. Oof, that's those are beautiful parts of of this country. Those are mm -hmm. yeah, those are absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And uh, yeah, you're right about the the accessibility, especially in the United States. They make it, you know, because there's a lot of uh, ADA laws and stuff in, yes. in, mm -hmm. involved um, with that. And other countries just aren't up to speed, or you're going to a more uh, rural place, or uh, yeah, in, in the, the developing world. And yeah, it's just not going to be quite the same um yeah, there's a lot of places in asia i go that is it's a tight fit or going to some of these european countries um and like stuff is like over a thousand to two thousand years old and the door be like this small you're like ah and it's hard for my, my skinnier friends to get through it so <laughs> no man makes makes sense yeah where people are smaller or where stuff was older and People mm -hmm. were smaller at that point uh, as well. Um, wow. So, Jeff, we, we talked a lot about um, what you do for the plus size world, but you're also co-founder of the Black Travel Alliance. So I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, what you do with that organization. And uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, just tell us a little bit more about how you got involved there. Yeah, so um, Black Alliance, uh, Black Travel Alliance started because of the response to the George Floyd um, like incident that happened here in America um, back in June of last year. Um, one of the biggest things that we realized was that um, we, we, people started just like, just in, in our frustration and wanted to see change happen in the black community uh, we thought about our sphere of influence, and that was in the travel space. Um, we realized that 
um, there wasn't enough um, amplification of black voices within the travel space, accountability between brands, and then just like that whole alliance part of it all to bring it all together. And so what we did was start the Black Travel Alliance, uh, me and 17 other uh, content creators, journalists um, within the travel space. And um, we, we, we now are a nonprofit. We have our 501c3. Um, we, we have been, one being, one holding people accountable in the sense of saying like, hey, if y'all are saying y'all are diverse, we don't see that we don't see that representation within any of your your stuff. Uh, you say that you're diverse, but what does diversity mean? And like, how are y'all diverse? Do y'all actually have people of color that work for y'all, specifically Black people? Um, and so that's just something that we haven't seen. And a lot of people, a lot of companies have come out. Uh, we did the campaign called Pull Up for Travel, where we asked people within the travel community to just show us their numbers of like hiring. And it, it opened so many people's eyes and it, it, it caused a lot of conversations, a lot of uncomfortable conversations or encouraging conversations, courage, yeah, uh, conversations to be had. Um, and it, it, it turned out to be well because it, it, it showed a lot of bias in some ways, but it also showed a lot of just like, oh, I, I just didn't think about this. Like, you're right now, like, oh wait, wow, yeah, we, like we have a whole uh, conference on diversity and every speaker is a white man and there's no women. <laughs> so you'd be like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like diversity. <laughs> and so and so it's, 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 in that, and it's in that way that we want to make sure that we see people represented in magazines, uh, at conferences, in, 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 in news articles, in journalism uh, articles, pieces, how like we we've even recognized that um, different major publications, uh, their editor for uh, a certain region in the world, like let's just say Asia, was ran by a, a white guy or somebody, or in Africa it was ran by a white person. And it's like you ask the question of, uh, is there any way that y'all can find people that that are from that place or? or something like that, just to bring more inclusion and diversity within it. And so it's just been great. It has been great. We've been, we, we partner with um, MMGY and we uh, created a, a survey or a study, I meant to say, and we pre pre presented that report. Now uh, it shows that over $109 billion were spent in 2019 from uh, just on, on travel within the black community. And that's very important to see in the show because now it shows that people are now know that like black people are traveling and spending money and that there's a market out there and people should be marketing to uh, these black people as well. And so we've also given out, I believe $40,000 worth of scholarships in the past year. Um, and we've been giving out grants, I meant to say grants, but then we also have given out scholarships as well. Wow, and are these, travel grants, educational scholarships. Uh, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's for, it was a content creator grants and then we gave it to uh, black owned travel companies. So uh, with the travel grants, uh, the creators, we gave out uh, about 20 uh, to content creators. And I think we did a thousand dollars for those. And then uh, we gave out, um, yeah, I think it was like maybe like two, three thousand for the organizations. Great. Well, I'm sure that will continue to grow, especially when you see the numbers. Like, did you say 100 billion? Uh, yeah, it's 129.6 billion oh my God. Uh, internationally and domestically. Wow. Well, that's yeah. Again, like we were saying, money, money talks. So this is, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a fantastic way to, for companies to open up their eyes. Um, to these things. Jeff, what uh, I think, you know, as you, you did such a nice job um, explaining to people, hey, here's, you know, here's what plus size people need to think about uh, before they travel. And, you know, we, I'm sure we all, everyone listening has plus size friends and 
this way you can be more sensitive to their needs, especially when you're, um, you know, going on, going on trips together or trying to include them on things, um, you know, and it could just be afternoons in the park or, or whatever, or, mm -hmm. or, Hey, we're going swimming or, or, you know, anything, anything like that. Um, so you did a great job there. And I, I would be uh, remiss not to ask what black people think about before they travel, because it's not, obvious really to the rest of you know these are the kind of conversations that i think after especially after black lives matter it almost became okay to ask these questions which yeah. is uh it's a relief honestly as as a white person to be able to feel comfortable at even asking you know oh no for sure yeah so one thing i would say even when i have these conversations i love to mention this every single time anytime we have these conversations is not to shame or make somebody feel bad. Like that's that's not the, cause I don't feel like shame will lead to anything. Um, and so one thing I, I would say is this, that I've learned from black folks. Um, so you remember, I, I didn't tell y'all this, uh, me and Matt was talking about it earlier. Uh, he kind of like briefly scanned over it or said it at the beginning. But yeah, I did a, a program in college called Camp Adventure. I got to go travel to all these different countries while I was in school. I think I went to almost 14 countries before I graduated. And I stayed in school a little bit longer because I kept leaving <laughs> and going away for four or five months and then coming back and finishing up school. So, but it was a great opportunity uh, for any student, any college student. And I was in charge of like, recruiting like students to go on these trips. And for the most part, it was expense free. You didn't pay for your flights. So you didn't pay for where you stay. You worked over there as an internship, but like you, didn't, it, it was maybe five to seven hundred dollars you would pay as a student, but you got all that money back technically from like the stipend and everything that you got. So you you really didn't have to come out of pocket for anything. Um, and that, that just sounds like a dream, you know, too good to be true kind of thing, right? And and, and in some ways it was, but I had to recruit people because we were like the the school I went to HBCU Florida and m University and so we actually brought the diversity to the whole program and so we we were targeting black students from my school and from Florida State um, and it was like pulling teeth to get them to to try to sign up for this opportunity and at that time and this is like 15 16 years ago now um one, like I told y'all before, representation. People never saw this. Uh, I, the more I've been in the travel space, the more I started finding out that like I have friends that have parents or grandparents or uncles and aunties that are white that took them on these like trips as kids. Trips as kids for me was like down the street. It was just Mickey Mouse. Like we didn't go places or we go see a family member in another state. So the one thing for black people is they never actually had those opportunities growing up or they felt like they didn't have those opportunities or even, um, it, it really came down to money. That's one thing that black people think about when it, uh, when it comes down to travel uh, and knowing how to actually like budget and do the stuff that they need to do to travel. Um, safety, um, come to find out, a lot of people will tell you this, that people feel a little bit more safe actually going to other countries um, because oh, there's wow. more of that American status uh, to where it's like you're almost untouchable in that way, quote unquote, huh. uh, to where, but yeah, it was always like a safety thing. Um, there's, there's always, we know that like, like statistically or like through, through the years that there have been times within American history where it wasn't as safe for a black person as it was for a white counterpart. And, and so we felt like that might've correlated over into the travel and being in other countries as well. Um, but we've, we found out now that is, is usually the opposite in the sense to where you actually feel a little bit more safe in other countries sometimes. But that was another thing, um, getting on airplanes, flying across seas, being in a foreign place. Um, that was since our family members, our cousins, our, our mom, that weren't doing that. Or we, we just didn't do it because we didn't have anybody else in our family doing it. Like it, it was a big step for me. The first place I ever, the first time I ever got on an airplane, first time was to Japan. Um, and I was the first country I ever went to um, ever. 
and I, it was a big, big moment for me. Like, it was like, I knew me saying that I was going to Japan, how my family would respond. Like, they, I knew, like, it, it was, to me, it was random, first of all. But then it was like, wait, wait, you doing what? Wait, 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 Japan? For what? Why? Why would you go to Japan? That's what it was. Like, that was the conversation. And I remember my mom having to, like, like figure out in her own head, like, okay, I, it's okay, you can go. Like, she had to, like, figure it out, like, oh, my God, something might happen to you over there, which parents do have that. Like, I'm not saying that parents don't have these moments, but um, I feel like it's a little bit different for more so, like, that safety and, like, as a Black kid, like, man, we don't, we don't know what could happen to you over there. Um, and so that all, like, people now, I have family members that have passports. None of them have passports before uh, they went on trips. My grandma always wanted to go to Paris. That's why I took her to Paris. Uh, but yeah, like now my family travels. Now my family gets out there because they have people within their family or friends now that are traveling and doing and seeing the world. And like them coming back, me coming back from Japan and then coming back and being like, oh, that was amazing. Uh, I got to go again and I'm going to go to Europe now. And then I come back like, oh, okay, he didn't die. He's good. And he's going <laughs> to have a great time. So I guess I can go now, you know? And that's that's what it is. And I feel like that's what happens a lot and within the black community. Um, now all these people are going across seas. Now these people are going places. Now we're now that we're seeing that like, okay, like this is cool. Like we can do this. Uh, that's amazing. Just by you existing, having these experiences for yourself, you're now a role model in your community and people are, are seeing that it's, that it's okay to do. And you know, you're, you're earning money now as a, as a travel influencer. So oh, this sure. is, you know, that, that's a, a huge step as, as well. I mean, that's, that's so many people's dream, regardless of, of race, religion, size, whatever. Yeah, um, sure. So yeah, Jeff, Jeff, that's, that's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask about a little bit about financial education. Um, okay. I know a lot of people, and this is, again, whomever is, is going to go travel, when you tell the people around you, uh, hey, I'm going to Japan, they're like, wait, you just, you got, you have this good job, you know, shouldn't you be saving up for, for a house? Um, yeah. <laughs> don't you want to pay off your student loans instead of going on this, on this trip? Um, you know, all the stuff that you hear, like, but specifically financially, related like oh you should uh as a man right you should probably save that for a ring to give to a nice girl one day you know you'll hear mm -hmm. you'll hear that kind of thing it's like well wait a second i'm investing in myself right now right. um right. so uh, i'd love to hear what it's like uh specifically in the black community but this is something that everybody when it comes to financial education and and um well of course being careful not to rack up a lot of debt because of travel but what are the things that you think about specifically hey am i ready to go and travel can i make this financial commitment yeah i, I can definitely say now like there's i don't i don't work off of debt to travel anywhere now like, if I can't pay for it, I just don't go, you know? Um, but the, the cool thing that, and, and I've learned this from, like, like Nomadic Mad and just, like, different uh, being on the points guys uh, advisory panel, um, like, credit cards and, like, learn how to use credit cards to your benefit to where you can travel for free, uh, essentially. Um, or whatever you do in your daily spending, how that can be cash back to towards your, your plane ticket and things like that. The one thing that I love showing people is that we parents, I could definitely say parents, especially parents from our gen or our parents' generation, they spent a lot of money on stuff they don't need. And they spent a lot of money uh, on just like, and they don't even know they're fervently spending it, you know, um, like cable. Cable, I mean, although people still have cable, a lot of people in our generation doesn't have cable like that no more. Like, give us the internet, we good. Uh, we can watch Netflix, we can do that. And we spent, we're still spending, literally, because I remember people's bills being two to $400 a month just oh. on cable bills, you know? Like, and I'm just like, 
Like what? Why? <laughs> um, <laughs> the different things people put in their houses. Uh, I feel like now millennials and Gen Zs, uh, they're they're definitely like becoming more minimalistic and and so we less things. We don't need as much stuff. And so like we're just talking about like people uh, adding all of this stuff in their house that they just is just here. And they spent thousands of dollars, like thousands upon thousands of dollars on furniture and, and buying fine china uh, that costs mm-hmm. <laughs> above. So it's not that they weren't spending money. It was just what you spent it on. And so I try to show people like uh, you could uh, go out and splurge 100 to 200 dollars a night on a meal. Uh, because that's a lot of a lot of times a lot of people don't realize that how much they spend on eating out all the time. Like if you cut back on that, man, that's a plane ticket within a month, you know, Absolutely. or um, guys that like to buy the Jordans, like they're, the Jordans cost two to $250. That's another plane ticket. Like, <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's the thing is like bringing that reality back to people of like, okay, how do I save money here? Like to me, I like to travel. So I'm going to eat. And this is before, uh, well, I'm guessing I'm going to have to eat PB and J sandwiches here, guys. Like, cause then I got this trip coming up. I need to eat PB and J. I need to push, put a hold back, so that I can like be able to do this this trip. And the sacrifice is amazing. A lot of times, like the the war is even amazing when you have the sacrifice. But now there are times where you can live in abundance, and there is abundance out there. And so, like it's just always picking and choosing how you spend your money because there's no reason or there's nothing wrong with you if you have the money to, to spend the money if you want to. But, and there's smarter ways to, because people are like, did you learn, win the lottery? Like, how are you traveling so much? <laughs> Literally, people was like, like people would talk to my mom and be like, oh yeah, he won. Yeah, he had, he had to. Because, I mean, when I first started, people, that was always what they always asked. They always was like, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? Where, where, where did you get the money for that? And I was like, whoa, y'all are asking a lot of questions here. And so now, like most of my travel is sponsored, or or, or I, I just been blessed now to be able to pay for all these trips. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's how you spend your money, it's how you budget your money. Like I was saying with those credit cards, there's there's a way to invest into something to where you get free stuff from it, like you get free money back. And so if you can stay on top of it and be do uh, you do your due diligence on getting the right car for you and knowing your lifestyle, uh, you can travel way more. That's that's great. Those PB and J sandwiches are paying off, Jeff. Now you're Man, who now, you telling? Who you telling? That's we amazing. <laughs> that's I got, I that's got Croatia, great. Uh, I got Croatia in, in five days, so wow. I'm on the yacht week. I'm, I've always wanted to go, so I'm, I'm super pumped up about that. Great, great. That's that's awesome, Jeff. You want to go into some rapid fire questions? Yeah, please. All right, let's uh, let's do it. So I'm just gonna. Uh, well, you probably know how rapid fire questions work. I don't know why I would explain it to somebody, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a uh, travel related question, and you can just say the first thing that comes to the top of your mind. If you like to elaborate a little bit, you're you're more than welcome. But um, yeah, we're coming sure. up on the top of the hour. So, all right, I would love to know what your favorite restaurant in the entire world is. That's a good question. Uh, right now, I would say my favorite restaurant right now is Charm Korean Barbecue here in Austin, Texas. Okay, this is this is good. Well, uh, I've not been there, but now you know. I'm glad that yeah, you didn't come. say like God knows where. <laughs> so okay, when I'm back in Austin, uh, we're we're going, Jeff. All right. I love it. Let's do it. Okay, excellent. Um, what would Jeff? I want to know what your favorite country in the world is oh it's hands down japan Japan. i love the culture yeah i love the culture i love the tradition and the food oh my god how they bring out food it's always prepared in such a great way like the food all over japan is just good um and and i think culturally and traditionally like it's just it's just different like when you get to japan it's just a different vibe and compared to like other countries like when you're in um like that you could might go to a lot of times you can just be yourself like oh i'm in i'm american in this place i must still be american in this place in japan nobody tells you to do it you just start doing it like oh let me make sure i'm doing let me make sure i'm bowing and 
Like, let me make sure I'm doing all this stuff right. Oh, let me not hold the sticks this way. Let me make sure I'm not tipping. Like, it's it's a whole bunch of stuff that there's a lot of rules. And it's fun. I like that um, because it, it, it helps you to grow. Uh, you, you're not just consuming. You're, you're, you're learning. Um, and I feel like Japan really forces people to learn, like, their culture and tradition. I love it. Yeah, that's that's a great way to get out of your comfort zone. And uh, mm-hmm. man, I haven't been to Japan. My brother is uh, he's fluent in Japanese and he has tons of Japanese friends. And yeah, just like, I don't know, he's amazing with it for whatever for whatever reason. And so I've been I've been telling myself, all right, I got to go with him if I'm going to go with anybody. See, that because sounds about right. He's going to show me. Uh, yeah, he's been a bunch of times. So, yeah, I haven't been yet, but um, I can't wait. It's, you know, it's it's on the very top of my list. So uh, yeah, I'm going again in, in uh, February. Wow. OK, where, where are you going? In uh, Tokyo. Tokyo. OK, mm-hmm. great, great. Um, Jeff, to uh, to move along with the rapid fire questions, what's one thing that you could not travel without? My iPhone. Easy. I need it. I need totally. It. Totally. Yeah, we can't can live without translate. those things. I can translate stuff. I get directions. Like that has changed travel period. So. Okay. Do you have a favorite travel app? Uh, yeah. Google Translate. <laughs> easy. Easy. Done and done. That, okay. that, and, that and Google Maps. That is, those are my two go-tos. Abs- absolutely. No, that, that sounds good. And um yeah, Jeff, uh, this has been a ton of fun. Um, I took a bunch of notes. For, again, we're going to link these things up on under30experiences.com slash blog. Um, before I let you go, I want to ask, you mentioned you have Croatia coming up, Japan coming up. I don't know why I would ask if you have anything else in the works, because that's <laughs> that's a lot to begin with. But um, yeah, you got any, I'm sure you, I'm sure you got plans. Yeah, I have a lot of plans and, and, and some really cool projects coming up in the future. So y'all stay tuned for that. Please follow me uh, on uh, socials at Chubby Diaries uh, and visit our website, chubbydiaries.com. We want to be the number one resource for plus size travelers. And so and even if you're not plus size, you can go and learn a lot too because you might have friends, family members that are trying to figure out how to get out there and travel. So you can help them travel by by going and learning as well. So, but thank you so much, Matt, for having me. Jeff, you got it. Thanks for doing this, uh, of course, here with me, but putting your, it, it's really authentic content. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed watching a bunch of your videos. I'm going to continue to follow. So Jeff, this was a blast. Uh, yeah, thanks thank again. You. Thank you for having me. Oops, I cut off my, here we go. I hit the wrong.